Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Stove Side Chats. My name is Chad Blackwater with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Thanks for being here. Um, happy Halloween. That's my homeboy back there. Haven't named him yet. Let me know what you think I should name him, and I'll name him that. Hey, Lazy Goat Produce, thanks for joining us and waving in. We appreciate that. All right, today on the chats, we have uh, Max Trujillo of NC f &B Podcast. Great podcast. You guys definitely check it out. He's doing a bunch of other stuff that we're going to talk about. Jane B, thanks for joining us. Monica D. Wood, thanks for joining us and waving. We appreciate that. All right, so we're just uh, going to looking out for, for Max. Laughing Spell, hello. M. Wang 81, thanks for joining us. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, next month, we got a good month of interviews lined up. Emmy Lee, I am Emmy Lee. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. All right. Oh, hang on one second. Let me. I think I the right. Hey, what's up, Max? Hey, hey, hey what's going on? Had to uh, uh, represent here. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Man, what a 32 years in the making. Most people uh, watching this weren't even born then. <laughs> you're exactly right. You're exactly right. <laughs> so uh, you're from you're from California, man. Let's start there. Tell us uh, tell us about that. Tell us about your background and how it led you to where you are today. Sure, sure. So you know, I'm Max Trujillo, uh, co-host of the uh, North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm from California, from Northern California, which is uh, uh, definitely controversial uh, to be a Dodger fan from there because everyone hates the Dodgers in the Bay Area. But uh, I did eventually take the take the advice of all my uh, Giants loving friends up there and said, if you like LA so much, get the hell out of here and go down there. So I did. And I lived in LA for 15 years. That's where I met my wife, Felicia, who runs Food Scene, great food photographer, social media management. And she and I have uh, two lovely daughters. And once we had our second child, we said, maybe it's a time that we move out of Los Angeles and go raise these kids in a much more sane environment. And so we found North Carolina and more specifically Raleigh. And uh, I've been here for, I guess, on my year of living out here. Or seven years some living out streaming here. streaming issues. Or can... Max, you there, buddy? Let's see. Yeah, I'm still here. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah, had some, some buffering issues there for just a second. Now, how did you guys uh, decide on Raleigh? Uh, you know, we just kind of did a lot of research. Uh, we looked at a lot of neighborhoods and school districts and job opportunities. We knew we wanted to be involved in the food and beverage industry in some capacity. And you could do that anywhere, but we wanted to pick a place that wasn't fully baked, so to speak. Uh, we mm -hmm. figured we'd find a place that could uh, hopefully uh, benefit from having some, some of us, uh, you know, some experience and come out here. So I initially took a job as the general manager at Midtown Grill in North Hills Raleigh and did that for a few years. And then ultimately, ultimately when my, uh, my good buddy and business partner, Matt Weiss, uh, moved from New York, he was looking to do the same thing. His wife was pregnant and they were looking to have a, start a family. And he saw that we were doing well in Raleigh. And he said, man, I guess maybe uh, convince me to come out there. And I said, do it, man, come out. And if you do, Let's do this podcast together. And so we've been doing it now. Uh, in December, it'll be four years that we've been doing the show, which is uh, pretty cool. Matt and I knew each other in Los Angeles. We both ran a restaurant together out there and okay. got deep into the, you know, the wine culture as we, as we do out in California. Yeah, and you, you have a, a musical background that sort of led you to the F&B world, correct? Uh, a musical background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I... I went to um, music school, went to Musicians Institute in Hollywood, uh, studied jazz in high school and a little bit in college, played, uh, I played a bunch, yeah, like, always got to have my little guitar with me everywhere I go, 
yeah. I literally was playing Los Angeles rock band songs during the Dodger game to like make me remember, you know, I was playing like Van Halen and Red Hot Chili Peppers and Incubus songs just to like uh, get like the feeling of living back there while we were watching the games. But, uh, really but that cool. also, that bit that helped uh, me figure out how to produce a podcast and do editing and do all of the, the technical stuff from my uh, music background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you, you have a lot of stuff going on. You, I, like you said, you have, you know, the uh, NCFMB podcast, um, Max Trujillo Productions, Trujillo Media, um, you're involved with the food scene, the kitchen. Um, touch on those briefly and kind of how all those entities sort of work together. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so I, I developed Trujillo Media just as a production company to uh, centralize what I do on a podcast uh, level. Uh, within that, uh, some listeners might be familiar with the Holderness family and uh, Kim and Ped Holderness who do great work. They're some of the funniest people that you'll ever meet and just good down to earth people. I help produce their podcast and they've been going strong for about two years now. And so that's one of the things I do. I also do uh, the Pencil Pushers podcast as a, as a producer, which is um, uh, centered around hand-drawn arts and uh Mike Rosato, who is the uh, the head of uh, MRC Raleigh, it's a graphic design branding company. He is the host, and I produce that with him. So all of that's all of that takes place at the Kitchen Raleigh, which is located right there in downtown, right in the absolute center of downtown of Fayetteville and uh, Hargett Street, right above the uh, the CVS that got really destroyed. <laughs> um, yeah. But we're in that building, and uh, so my wife's company. Uh, the aforementioned food scene is there. Uh, MRC is there. My production company plus the podcast studio. Um, and then we have various other people that join in like Chef Bobby McFarland. Uh, he'll come in with uh, a lot of culinary sides to things. Um, but we consult. We help build brands, build restaurants. Uh, one of the more notable ones is uh, Y Hill Kitchen and Brewing. We, we have a lot to do with the evolution of that. I'm actually going there tonight. I should be there in about an hour to kind of help run the floor. Uh, I came on as a consultant and then during the reopening uh, after the post pandemic quarantine, uh, Chris and Sarah, the owners, they asked if I would come back and help them just kind of negotiate during this tough time and understand how to run a restaurant through this time. And so I did, and I, I love the brand. I love the restaurant. I love what's going on. And I also am a big believer of trying to kickstart this industry now during this time i don't i didn't want to sit on the sidelines and just watch my uh my fellow brethren do it alone so i said why don't i jump in there and try to help out as much as possible and so um so yeah that's where you'll currently find me uh during the week that's that's really cool man um yeah. now yeah, let's things, talk about uh, you know i'm oh. no go ahead yeah, go, go ahead. ahead are you I was just going to say, uh, I'm just, I'm now working on new projects. Uh, I don't want to say any uh, specific stuff yet, but I am working on a couple of new projects um, that are involved in the food and beverage industry and uh, be like a little bit more near and dear to my heart and things that I want to do. Uh, I've always kind of been a big proponent of craft cocktails uh, and, um, and just great social gathering areas. And so, that's going to be about as much as I can tell you right now, but we will be doing something soon. Hopefully you'll be seeing something from my camp in a more specific sense uh, at the beginning of 2021. That's, that's exciting. I look, look forward to hearing more about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's talk about, uh, obviously, you know, you, you're talking with loads of people in the industry on a weekly and daily basis. Uh, demonstrate the extremes of what people are going through this COVID. Choppy, sorry. Sorry, I uh, got a little choppy. I didn't hear the question. No, I was just saying, can you share uh, a couple examples that kind of illustrate some extremes of what people are going through restaurants during COVID? Sure, man. Um, like, for one, uh, I do know that, um, like, like, for instance, uh, my good buddy, Jake Wood, he is going to, he's planning to open Lawrence barbecue and that's going to happen in, in RTP, but 
he, along with many other people, had to just shut down or at least push, put on pause the, the, the evolution of trying to build a restaurant. And he himself, along with many other people that were planning to do something this year, got stuck in that in-between phase where he couldn't really receive the same type of loans and uh, bailout finances. That's where we try to get creative. I wanted to help it would help myself out. Try to get uh, some barbecue into downtown Raleigh, and he really is doing it better than most. And so we, mm -hmm. we opened up our kitchen at Y Hill on Mondays and Tuesdays when we typically are closed to give him an opportunity to make some money. Uh, but then also we could open the bar and we could make money uh, while our kitchen guys got a uh, two days off in a row. And that's, that's something that we're being very cognizant about in the, in the restaurant industry now. I think taking this pause, if you will, from the pandemic and the quarantine has really helped a lot of people evaluate wh where they are and what they want to do and evaluate their businesses and make those tough decisions as to if you want to go forward or not. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's uh, been like a, it's almost been like a, not a day of reckoning, but it's been like a whole season of reckoning about, Ooh. you know, are we going to continue doing this? But I now am seeing through the podcast a lot of new businesses coming through and they're being more mindful with what's happening now, whether it's a uh, better quality of life, um, paying people more equitably, uh, maybe respecting those of different genders. Forward. People have been readjusting to this whole thing. And um, it's been sad to see some of the businesses that wasn't able to make it through. But, um, you know, I've, this, this whole thing has been really, really weird on a lot of different levels, obviously. Um, I think it's interesting how, like you said, it's kind of it's kind of pulled the curtains back on a lot of issues that needed to be addressed for a long time. And I feel like, if anything, this has kind of opened up that door a little bit so we can get our foot in it and, you know, keep chipping chipping away at some of these issues that have that have plagued the industry for a long time. So it's been interesting yeah. to see how that played out. Um, well, look, let's talk about your podcast a little bit. Um, it's been a raging success since you've been doing it and you guys get killer guests on there. I listened to uh, the one with chef David Burke the other night and oh, yeah. I grew up cooking in the late eighties and nineties and he was been a hero for a long time. And um, I love his New York accent and he's just, he seems like such yeah. a cool guy. Um, and I'm looking forward to go seeing what he's doing in Charlotte. It sounds really, really interesting. Um, how do you guys go about, um, like, what's your process behind booking guests on the show? You know, that's, uh, that's funny. We talk about that all the time, both um, Matt and I, uh, Matt Weiss and I. We just had a conversation earlier this morning. We talked about it yesterday as well. But, uh, you know, I addressed it in next week's episode that's coming out. Uh, we were speaking with um, – the gents that are about to open up uh, Hank's downtown dive in downtown Cary, uh, Matthew Bettinger and uh, Evan Cordes. And we were discussing how a lot of the people that are on the show recently have been just like close personal friends of ours. And you could look at it as like, all right, is that making our podcast feel small and maybe not as uh, you know, statewide or national? And at the same time, like the aforementioned David Burke is a nationally recognized chef. And, uh, and we recently had the, some of the owners of Wicked Weed Brewing and uh, Nicole Austin, who's a master distiller who does George Dickel. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty notable people in the industry that kind of cut across the state lines and become a little bit more nationally recognized. I think we just open ourselves up to whenever, like what is currently happening in the times right now. And it might be that our good friends are about to open a restaurant, whether it's in Cary or Durham or Raleigh. Or it could be that somebody from another area is doing something that's poignant and interesting and it's relevant to our industry. And so we think, well, let's, let's get them on the show. And as far as booking them, sometimes a PR agent will call us and uh, that's how David Burke got on. It's like he was coming in and their PR agent uh, contacted us. So that makes us feel a little special. It's like, oh, wow, people are contacting us. That's cool. Uh, other times we have established relationships. I know that 
Chef Vivian Howard just released her uh, new book and we want to have her on the show. So that's just a relationship. We just know her and we chat with her and give her a text or, or whatever, and we'll, we'll get her on the show soon. Um, so it really is just, um, there are no exact rules. We just do it as, uh, as, as the industry evolves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is, talk about a few interviews. Like, has there been some that you've, you've geeked out on somebody you've been really, really excited to interview or any big surprises or revelations you've had during an interview? Most definitely. And actually it's uh, it's poignant because it's the most recent episode. So if you're curious as to what we're talking about on the podcast, you can listen to this week's episode, which is with Stephen Coster. Uh, Stephen and his wife, Ann Stewart Coster just recently took over uh, Bloomsbury Bistro right there in Five Points in Raleigh. Now to say something is local and small and like in the, in the you know, more just like in our friendship network, that was the fear was that, well, this episode might be a little too regional, you know, it might just uh, only be relevant to those that are living in the area. But man, we started talking about the industry, uh, what it means to have a chef run restaurant to a more front of the house run person. Uh, chef John Toller has been known really uh, very well respected as a, you know, a, a French chef, uh, not French, but, uh, you know, um, studied as a, in a traditional French culinary style. Um, and then now with all of these years since 95, now he's, you know, kind of handing it over 25 years later to somebody else. And Steven, who has a ton of experience, both coming up from Cowfish, but also at 42nd Street and many other places. Um, it was a great conversation if you're in this industry to just kind of hear how the, the approach of running a restaurant may differ from being, say, a chef to a front of the house general manager. And at the end, I was more than satisfied it ended up being one of the my most favorite episodes we've done because i just think it really spoke to me as well as speak to hopefully someone like yourself or or those in the business because we just were super real uh we we laughed a bunch too we actually made a bunch of van halen references because it's like steven's now the 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 sammy hagar taking over for david lee roth you know and uh <laughs> and uh just making it poignant since uh since we just lost eddie recently so you know big fan yeah, of that. There you go. famous tapping but, but he uh but that episode i just was texting with stephen coster today that uh we were just shooting the breeze about uh he was asking me some contacts for uh some um some some leads or whatever and uh i told him i said you know your episode oddly enough was one of the most downloaded episodes we've had over the last few months and wow. it blew me away. I, I mean, they also helped promote it too, the, the, he and his camp. And so that helped a great deal too. But, um, but it was good. And I'm, I'm glad it makes me feel good to know that that particular episode that we did was also uh, listened to by many people. Because I think that really helps peel you back into behind the scenes of how a restaurant truly works. And, uh, that, that Absolutely. Was a good I'm looking forward to, looking forward to, to watching that. I was, uh, I was surprised to hear that news. I've, I've known John for a long time back when he worked for Rick Robinson at Mondo. And um, I, I can't believe he's been there for 25 years, but um, he's always been such a dedicated guy. I was a little surprised, but I, I certainly understand. I mean, you know, I had my time behind the range and um, yeah. had a good, good time, but I'm glad that I'm glad they're behind me now. But uh, so listen, Max, thank you for being here, man. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but I wore a cool sports jacket in your honor. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's what I, yeah. you know, I, mean, so, I'm here, I just, I'm wearing a pink shirt that says uh, Calif California sun. So I'm really feeling nice. it in this beautiful there you weather go. we're having. Yeah. I know. Very California. <laughs> yes. It's funny. Ma Max and I will run each other throughout the year at industry events and he's always rocking a awesome sports coat. Like I think I'm, I'm in pretty good shape that I see Max and he always out sports coats me. So uh, this is for you, buddy. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. Look, Thanks for being here, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Thank you. See you. All right. That was Max Trujillo. You guys, make sure you check out his podcast, NC f &B Podcast. It's really, really good. Um, and his media company that produces podcasts, all the podcasts that he's, pro that he's produced combined, they've gotten over 1.5 million views in like two years so. Um, the man knows what he's doing. So anyway, thanks for being here. Next week, we have Chef Ricky Moore of the Salt Box in Durham. Looking forward to talking with him. Thanks for being here, guys. Happy Halloween. Let me know what to name him. See you guys.